City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, welcome back. So today I'm going to be starting a project, well, completing a project on your side um, for a dress. Now I've had this pattern for just a little bit and it looked very fun. But I've been waiting for the right fabric and last weekend I was at the Sewing and Quilting Expo and I bought one that I think is going to be really fun. I'm backing up so you can see the entire thing here. There was a lady and I can't remember her name but her store is African Prince Overload. Amazing bright colorful fabrics you know. Um, this is one of them that I got. So it's very fall-ish with the colors and the leaves and everything, but it gets more intense at the bottom, kind of like a border print, okay? So I am going to be using it this way, you know, the opposite direction than you would normally cut everything out, so that at the top of my dress, you know, there's just gentle falling leaves, and then towards the bottom, it's the bigger and bolder colors. And I'll show you how I cut that out. Um, so, obviously I'm cutting it out different than the pattern's going to call for, but I'm going to put it together the same. I, because I'm cutting things out differently, I'm thinking I have plenty of fabric for what I want, and I'll tell you what I want. If I have to modify it later, you will find out. So what I'm going to plan on doing is this type of sleeve, the longer sleeve, um, but instead of the little short skirt with the ruffle, I'm going to be doing this, which is just, you know, one big long length. And I'm going to be making it as long as I can because this dress is made for a shorter skirt and going into fall and winter and everything. I want a little bit longer, but I think that this is going to work out. My fabric is 45 inches wide, so the very longest I can cut a piece is 45 inches. You know, so we're not talking floor length here. So anyhow, um, the fabrics, if you do get her fabrics or similar ones, what I would say is when you get them, they're going to feel very stiff. Wash them. I wash, this one is polyester. I got some polyester, some cotton. Wash it in hot water. You know, a very heavy duty wa hot water wash. Then uh, dry it on a high heat and everything, which is what I did. And they soften up amazingly. So. Let me go ahead and get my pattern cut out. I am going to be using my usual size 16. Um, and it, there probably has a lot of ease in here. It looks like there's a lot of ease built in, so we should be fine with that. I am cutting things out right now. And what I am seeing is that there's a sash piece that is going to use a lot of fabric. And so if I don't have enough fabric to make that sash, I think that this dress will look fine. Just wearing it with a belt, especially the coloring I have. I think a little leather belt would look cute. So basically I'm going to be cutting out my front and back pieces and my sleeve pieces first because those are the biggest and they'll use the most fabric. And then from what's left from there, I'm going to cut out my uh, yoke pieces for the front and back. And after that, I'll fit everything else where it can go. And if I don't have enough to make a sash, because you have to, is this four? No, nope, only two. You have to cut two of these. So, you know, that's about it a half a yard of fabric just for the sash, okay? So if I don't have enough for that, I'm just going to skip that and use a regular belt. So just letting you know my thought process, I will be back shortly. 
So for my pattern, because I'm kind of going with this look without the ruffle, I'm going to look in what the pattern says for my size as the finish length is 34 and 3 quarter inches. And that is the measurement from the base of the neck to the finished hemmed edge. So I'm going to put my little clip there, hold this end up to the base of my neck and see where it falls and get an idea of how many inches I need to add to that to make it fit where I need it to. Okay, so where I want my finished hem to be is closer to 41. I think that that's going to work for this style dress for me. And that means I need to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 inches to the bottom of this pattern piece. Okay, so let me just find a pencil somewhere. Okay, here we are. I'm just going to add plus six inches right now so I don't forget. Then when I'm cutting out my pattern, I'm just going to add it straight at the bottom. And the front and back are cut on a fold. So because of the direction that I'm cutting my fabric, I just want to double check that I have enough because the absolute longest I can make this piece, let me raise you up here, is 44 inches because that's the width of my fabric. So if I measure six inches below, okay, so starting my measurement here at six inches and coming all the way to the top, well, that's 36 inches. I have plenty of, plenty of uh, room in the fabric, so I should be good. I just wanted to show you, this is Midna. She is the cat that hangs out in my sewing room and steals my chair, you know, but we love her. She's a sweetheart. She's very fluffy and she sheds everywhere, literally everywhere, but she's worth it. All right, so I have finished cutting out everything except the sash. And this is what I have left. So obviously the sash is not coming out of this fabric. But I had enough for everything else, so I'm going to call that a win. Huh, let's see what the instructions say. If they include all of the instructions, that would be a good thing. So I do see that they are on this one doing the little scan me deal so that if you want to know how to understitch or all of these other things that you're supposed to scan this and go to their videos. As it seems to be the way of things in the world. Okay, so we are starting with our piece number one, which is the yoke front. And we've cut two of those, or at least I have. And the two yoke pieces are there. One is a yoke and one is the facing, basically. Okay. Now on my fabric, one side is a little bit bolder and sharper than the other. And that is my right side. If you can see, you know, I have a darker background and all. That's my right side. So right now they are right sides together. Okay. So on the piece... It's printed very faintly, so that's why I'm bringing it up here. It has a center front line, a stitching line, a slash line. I need to transfer these little circle markings over. So if you haven't seen before, the way that I transfer a lot of those markings is I have a piece of leather, which I put under my tissue paper. I'll just do it over here so you can see. This is a leather hole punch. I just put it over that circle and push straight down and it punches out the little circle. Okay, so now I can put this over my fabric and let's see if a red ink will show up. These are heat erasable pens and as soon as I iron them they will disappear. I do love them. They make life easy. Um, if you're going to use them, test it out on your fabric first, but you know, I've never had a problem. Never had a problem. So, I have these three circles transferred over here. Now it's kind of hard to see on there, so I'm going to go ahead and draw the little connecting lines right now to make it more obvious. The connecting lines are my stitching line. Hopefully you can see that. And 
that one, okay? So I'm going to put some pins around it here. And over at my sewing machine, I have yet to figure out which sewing machine I'm going to use today. I need to do that really quick. I'm going to stitch down, and I'll use a fairly short stitch for this, down, stop at the dot, leave my needle down, and pivot the whole thing, and continue the rest of the way up. Just stitch this whole, this little V in a straight stitch. Okay, so I'm looking at my stitching here, and I'm going to cut straight up the middle here. Come on. As close as I can to that point, but I do not want to cut my threads. So I'm just going to get myself right in here. See how that goes. Now I need to turn everything right side out. I'm not sure because um, you can see my stitching went a little bit below where I can clip. Um, what I should have done is gone down, make one stitch sideways, and then gone back up so I could make sure I could get my scissors in there. But you know, we make it work, don't we? All right, let me go ahead and turn it right side over. And you're just going to choose one of these pieces to be on the outside and one to be on the inside. Okay, so do you see how it's puckering down there on the bottom? That's because I wasn't able to clip that bottom to that bottom stitch. So what I'm going to do is just clip my little thread so it can lay nice and flat. And I am going to be under stitching this anyway, so it's going to have another reinforcement stitch coming. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like on the outside. Okay, so it's been a couple days and I came back up here, took a look at this fabric and I had finished that little triangle reinforcement stitching and I decided I did not like it. Have you ever done that where you do something and then afterwards you look at it and you say, no, nope, I don't think so. So I took it out. Let me show you what I did to fix this. Now, if I was to do this again from the beginning, I would be stitching, you know, where the V is down, do a stitch over at the bottom and then go back up. My whole problem was when I did my just pivot at the bottom, those two stitches, they were overlapping so closely I couldn't get all the way at the bottom. Okay, so instead, because this, fret, this fabric wants to unravel a lot, you know, where I was picking everything out, what I did is I just went over, oops, remember I have a little stitch witchery there. I'm gonna open that up here. I just ran a serging on it. So let's turn this wrong side out again so you can see. Just basically opened up that V and right along the edge, I just ran a little bit of serging down, turning at the bottom and going back up on this side, okay? And that way, when I turn it right side out and press it, it looks fine. Um, because it's just the little simple serging, I am not going to be understitching this. I am a big fan of understitching, but um, when, you, when I press it, one side is necessarily gonna show a seam more than the other side because I can choose, I am just arbitrarily going to choose this side that does not show where that seam line is as my front, this as my facing, and we're just going to move on from here. And I think that that looks fine. Um, I like that little swoopiness. So, you know, live and learn and all of that. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is right here. Okay, so now that we finally have this done, what I need to do is get both of these pieces of fabric to stay together so that I can use them as a single unit. It looks like I need to go get pins from another pin cushion. Um, so what I'm just going to do is make sure that the edges are all matched up. 
and go over to my machine and with a straight stitch about a quarter inch in, I'm just going to baste it all the way around like this, just to hold those in place. Actually, I just changed my mind because I was looking at the instructions and um, I think it's gonna be better for me if instead of just using a straight stitch, that I go ahead and just serge over the edges, catching both edges. Uh, because I'm gonna need to do that anyway, so I might as well just save a step, just being careful to make sure that everything is matched up nice nicely. So I wanna just barely go along the edge, trying not to trim off any fabric, making sure I have nice sharp corners, and I'll be right back. All right, so it's actually been, again, a couple days. I'm in the middle of a lot of projects right now. So I am back here, and what I just did is brought my little piece over that I've surged the edges on, and I just put a couple little come on, chalk marks down where the notches are on the bottom and the sides, and I need to add them for the top notches here also. Um, that's right there and right there. I did not clip this before I surged it, which is usually how I mark my clips, but you know there was so much else going on, I just forgot. Now there are also some dots. The dots, um, at this point I'm ignoring it. The ones on the bottom, they are at the point for my size where the 5 8 inch seam allowance here and the 5 8 inch seam allowance here is going to meet. That's where this dot is. So I can pretty much guess that when I'm sewing it, where those two points meet is where that dot's going to be because in my busy print, it's going to get lost. Now up here, it's interesting to note that it's 5 8 of an inch from this side, you know, just like on the bottom. However, it's only 3 8 from the top. At least that's what my eyeballing says. And if I measure from the center of the dot, uh, yeah, it's 3 8 of an inch. So that means that up here, and that's where there's going to be a band, a little band sewn on there, that's going to be at a smaller seam allowance. So good to remember there. Okay, I need to get my piece number five, which is this big front piece here, and I do have it. Remember, I cut mine longer than the pattern. Um, I am going to serge all the way around this before I start attaching it. But, since I am remembering, doing all of this marking there. I am going to go ahead and clip my notches. And yes, I clip my notches before I serge. If I'm looking for them, I can find them, but they're not terribly obvious to the rest of the world. And um, yeah, I got that one. And that way my serging isn't going to unravel because if I clip them after my serging will unravel. So now that I have those clipped, I'm going to go ahead Surge all the way around this piece and I'll be right back. Okay, so the top of my piece is this up here and I need to run a couple rows of gathering threads. There are two notches that I've clipped. Trust me, they're in there. Um, but there's also two dots and just like the other piece, the dots are at the 5 8 point in. And um, right here, 5 8 inch from the edge, okay, and 5 8 inch down. Now, my gut says I can just eyeball this, but since I have the camera going, I'm going to go ahead and punch it out. Okay, punch out my little circle here, place it over that corner with my red heat erasable pen, which shows up fairly well. Actually, I'm drawing a big old line there so I won't lose track of it. That's my outer edge of my gathering threads. Okay, that way it won't, none of the gathering threads should get stuck in the seam allowances. Alrighty, so I've got my two rows of gathering threads in here. And I was looking at the right side when I put them in so I know that my bobbin threads are on the wrong side. And I pull my bobbin threads when I gather because they're a lot easier. So I need to make sure that I have the right side of this. Remember one side is the outside, one side is the facing, and I want this to be my right side because, let me see if you can see, on this side, 
the right side, you don't see anything. On the wrong side, you slightly see where that seam line is. It just curls slightly onto one side, so that will be my facing. So I have marked where my center front is, and I have my dot over on the side, and I have a notch. I drew actually a line where my notch is, so it'll be more visible because this print is very busy. So I'm just going to start matching those points up. And once I have them all matched up, then start pulling on my bobbin threads of my gathering stitches and get those uh, cinched in so everything will lay nice and flat. I wanted to point out while I'm doing this, sometimes, you may be, because I am sometimes tempted to skip the notches when I'm gathering, but on a pattern that's not really familiar to you, I would suggest you don't because sometimes the designers like will put a lot more gathers between certain spots than in others, like more on the sides or more in the center or something. And if you don't have your little notches and everything there to match up, you miss that entirely. You know, it's usually not the end of the world, but you don't get the right design effect. So anyhow, I have it all pinned together here now. I'm going to go ahead and tug the bobbin threads on one side, get them cinched up all the way to the center, and then tug them on the other side and get those cinched up on the other side. Okay, so I think I have it all gathered up in there, just wrapping these around for a minute. I'm going to come back now and stitch this at 5 eighths of an inch right across here. Okay, so my gather thread should be hidden. Once that's done, I'm going to go to my ironing board and press the seam allowance up towards the yoke up here. Okay, so this is what this front piece looks like right now. Okay, this is the right side and I have pressed my seam allowances up and I did do a little bit of light pressing over the gathered part of the fabric just because I like them to lay flatter and not so poofy, you know? So I'm just going to set that aside for a minute because we're going to do a very similar thing for the back. So the back, this is the back yoke. It's cut on a fold. And this one, it does not have a facing. It's just a single piece of fabric, okay? So I am going to need to clip its notches. Again, I'm not doing the dot right now just because I know where that dot should be. If you don't feel comfortable with that, by all means, clip that dot. There is no notch on the very top here. So for this back yoke piece, and you can see it kind of curves a little bit. Um, if I lay this this way, I think you can see it. So this bottom of the curve here is going to be the bottom. Up here is going to be the top. Just because things get confused and that might disappear from my thought process in a minute. I'm going to get one of my little labels and I am going to pin it up here towards the top of the back piece. Now it's obvious to me this is the top of my back piece. All is good and when I'm done I might just sew my label on because why not? Okay, so I'm going to serge around the outside edge of this piece and the lower back piece, which looks very, very similar to the lower front piece. Okay, let me raise you up here. So up here, there are some more notches that I'm going to clip, just like the front. Take this pattern piece off and serge around the entire piece as a whole. And then just like the one I just did, two rows of gathering threads at the top here, just from the point where this dot is in which is that 5 8 inch point from that point in, okay? Okay, so this is just like what I did on the front. I have marked my center back on my bottom part. I've marked my center back. Where are you, center back? Right here. There it is. Very pale. I know you can barely see it. I can barely see it. So I'm going to hang on to that. I've marked my center back on my yoke. I'm going to match up the centers. The notches, I need to make sure I'm putting my right sides together on my fabric. It's slightly darker on the right side. Okay, so get these popped together. The notch, the outside edge, just like the front one. Gather it up, sew it at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then press this seam allowance up towards the yoke after I'm all done. 
I am working on pearl today and I wanted to show you, I picked this up last week. I wanted to show you how it works because I think it's fabulous. Um, I get a lot of these spooled, the longer ones, threads, um, lost usually off of the waywalk.com website. I love those threads. Um, and they're a, they're a pain to use on the little spools and using the racks back there can also be troublesome, you know, getting in the way. From this angle, you can see that the thread's up sideways like this, and it can just spool off. And this little thing, I can pick it, pick it up off of here and move it to any other, any other machine and everything. Sorry, I didn't mean to be shaking my table. I was just very exuberant there. So yeah, I'm pleased with it. I will try to add this to my links in my video description of where I got it. Actually, while I have the camera over here, I wanted to show you, um, you know, this is just a basic thing and you probably already know, but when you're sewing something with a lot of gathers, to me, it's a lot easier to put the fabric that's being gathered up on top so I can see it, you know, and make sure that everything is behaving the way it should as I'm sewing. Ooh, she's bouncy today. And that way, you know, if I'm sewing along, I can adjust everything and nothing's gonna get caught sideways and it's just a whole lot easier that way, so. Alrighty, so this is my back piece. Seam allowance pressed up, ready to go to the next step, which is pockets. This dress does have pockets, so that's great. Now on the side of your pattern, there's a couple dots. And what I do for this back piece, it's gonna be the exact same thing on the front. So I'm only gonna show you once, but on both the front and back pieces, there's these two dots on the side. That marks your pocket placement. So when I transferred those over, you know, busy print, my dots get kind of lost. So I went ahead and put pins there also. So we know where those are. So the pocket pieces themselves, this is it. Um, there are four of them. And before I get started with anything, I'm gonna, uh, you guessed it, go over to my serger and serge around each one of these. Alrighty, so I've got all of my pockets serged and then I iron them after I serge them because sometimes when you're serging around a curve, it you know, does weird shapes. Then after all of that, I went ahead and marked where these dots are, okay? These two dots on your pocket are what's gonna match up to these two dots on the dress like that, all right? So now with the right sides together, I'm gonna match up where this dot is here, that dot there, go ahead and pin it. Now you wanna sew this first seam where you're sewing on your pocket at a smaller seam allowance than the standard. Oops. So let's say, let's see what they tell you to do. Okay, they say 3 eighths of an inch, which is good. That's standard, way to go them. So the entire length of your pocket, make sure the uh, fat part of your pocket is down, okay? So it all the way up here to the bottom of your pocket at a 3 eighths inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do the same for both sides of my back and both sides of my front. Alrighty, so I've got my pocket sewn on here and the seam allowance is going for the, the dress needs to stay out, okay? So I'm gonna fold the pocket over this way, keeping all the seam allowances going that way. Okay, so it's visible right here. I'm gonna press my pocket. Now I know that when I press my pocket, my little dots are gonna disappear, but that's okay. I'm keeping my little tissue paper handy so I can just find that dot later. Um, but that is it. Let me go ahead and press all four pockets and we'll go back to the table. Okay, so back here at my table, here's one side. And what I do for one side, I'm gonna do for the other. And this is my front. And so I'm gonna lay my back on top of that, right here, matching up. Oh, this fabric wants to move on me. Okay, and so I'm just gonna match up where the pocket is all the way up to the top. Let me just get that pinned first. You're gonna wanna make sure that where this seam line is here at 3 8 7 inch matches up with the seam line on the back side. 
since you, you know, don't have x-ray vision, you can kind of feel it, but I find that sticking a pin through is a little bit easier. And then I'm pinning that in the middle just to hold that together. Now, if your pocket does not match exactly, let's see, it's a little bit deformed right there, which happens, which happens. Uh, don't worry too much about it because that's going to be on the inside and no one's ever going to see it. So once I get this pinned, I'm going to grab my pocket piece here. Here it is. And I'm going to remark where this the dots are that I ironed off just a moment ago. So the top one is up here and my bottom one is right about here. It's this level that I want to keep track of. Okay, right here and right here. So the way that I'm going to sew this, and I haven't actually pinned the top, but I will do that as soon as I turn the camera off, is I'm going to come at 5 8 of an inch. Here we go from the top here down to the level where this dot is, okay? I'm gonna make a mark. Make sure this is lined up where I can feel it. Okay, I'm gonna make a mark about a quarter inch on this side of that seam. That's gonna be approximately where 5 8 of an inch is, okay? So I'm gonna come down here to that dot, put the needle down and pivot, and come in and go around my whole pocket. Okay, now this is where my upper dot is. What I'm going to do is come straight over, and I'm going to draw this right now so it won't get lost, to a point where I'm coming 5 8 of an inch from the edge here. I'm going to draw another dot, this dot is not on the pattern, about a quarter inch from this seam. And that's what I'm aiming for, and I'm going to stop just before that dot, okay? So this comes down, over, and boom, to right there. You know, back stitch, lock it in. Then you're going to start another seam up here at the level where the dot on your pattern is, about a quarter inch in, right here, and go down straight through here, you're at 5 8 of an inch all the way to the bottom. Okay, so it's two different seams, down, around, and then straight down. So let me go ahead and make sure that my pocket's lined up and pinned correctly, pin everything else, and make those two seams. All right, so I've got my side seams put in, and I'm over here at my ironing board, obviously, because I need to press my seam allowances open and do some clipping. So I've got it up here, so I only have one side at a time to deal with, and this is my front side. It's the one with the little opening right here, okay? So this is the front, this is the back. I want the pockets to go towards the front, okay? But I am going to want my seam allowance to be pressed open as much as possible. So I'm going to come in here with my scissors, and just the back side of this seam allowance above the pocket, here's where the pocket starts, I'm making a clip to about an eighth of an inch away from my seam line, okay? Then I can come up here, press this. Now, where the pocket is, I'm pressing it towards the front, okay? But it's pressed above, above it, towards the front where the pocket is, and then, just like up here, just below the pocket, I'm coming in here and clipping just the back part of this seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching line. And I'm going to press this bottom seam allowance open. Okay, so I'm going to do that on both sides. And if you can see, well you can't see, let me move this up here, the very bottom of my pieces didn't match up exactly, that's okay. I would much rather have it be at the bottom that they don't match out where I can just, you know, work it out in a hem than up at the top. So if that happens to you, especially when you're adding length and things like that, don't stress that. We can work that into a hem. So let me go ahead and press the other side of my seam allowance. And then the bodice part of this is going to be done and we're going to get started working on the sleeves. All right, so I've got my sleeve piece here, which consists of the lower sleeve, a yoke piece of sleeve, which goes above it, 
and a band which goes down here okay now the instructions are a little bit odd to me um, what they want you to do is they tell you to with your individual sleeve pieces to gather the upper upper edge of lower sleeve okay that's this big piece so the upper part up here it's going to get joined to the yoke all right so they want you to put in those gathering stitches don't sew it to the yoke yet but then they say put in your side seam sew this together and then they say now gather this after you've sewed the side seam and gather it all together inside of here. So that seems a little too complicated. I mean, it's not too complicated, but I think there's an easier way to do this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to first surge around each piece you know, because I got to get that done of this piece. This piece I am not surging around. It's going to be a band. It won't fray. Okay, once I have them all flat, I am going to run my gathering stitches at the top and at the bottom. Still while it is flat, I'm going to go ahead and gather the bottom to the band. Okay, while well, it's a nice flat piece. And then I'm going to sew the side seam. Okay, so with our new strategy in mind, I am going to set aside my sleeve band and my, well, they just call it sleeve. It's like the yoke piece and get my lower sleeve pattern here and go ahead and transfer over all of the markings. Now, once again, because it's me, I like to mark on my fabric which side is the back because these look very similar this is the front this is the back but they fit a little bit differently so you know it's the back because it has two notches the front has one notch it's just the way things are so back here on the wrong side and the wrong side is the lighter part which i believe i am looking at let me open this up yeah see how that's darker okay so on the wrong side in this back corner I am putting a letter B with my red pen circling it so hopefully I'll be able to see that um, for some reason my pen is not showing up very well but it, it disappears very easily when I iron it so I guess that's good so I'm going to go ahead and take this over to my serger and serge around these pieces. I'm not going to worry too much about the um, notches because I know that these are both short pieces here. Uh, this is going to be gathered up there, but there are no notches on the bottom where that big long band gets gathered to. So we are good. Let me go ahead and serge around these pieces and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back to another day. So I'm trying to remember where I was last time and I'm pretty sure I have my gathering threads both at the bottom and the top of each of my big sleeve pieces which are not being sewn together yet. Okay, so now I need to get the band that's going to go around the bottom. So I'm skipping the yoke for right now. I'm going to get my band and they don't really have notches on here so I'm just going to go ahead and take the pattern piece off and come up with my own method here so since they don't have notches I am assuming it's going to be a fairly evenly distributed gather so the easiest for me is going to be to find my center point on my band so folding it together here just going to put a little mark where I can see it all right and then also on my sleeve making sure I'm dealing with the bottom not the top the top has the little cutouts okay so here is well I should have put that on the other side but I can figure that out this is my center of my sleeve here and I'm going to match that up with the center of my little band that looks pretty good go ahead and pin that and pin the outside edges now I have my gathers starting 5 8 7 inch or so 
or thereabouts from the outside edge here. Okay, so now that I have this point, pretend I did the same thing over here. I'm just going to go ahead and split the difference at this point, you know, finding the midway point in there, pinning that together. I'll do the same thing on the other side and go ahead and pull my gathering threads and get it all settled nicely into my band. All right, so at this point I've got both of my sleeves gathered up and pinned together. So I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and with this side up so I can keep an eye on where all these ruffles are, um, getting those threads out of the way, I'm gonna be stitching this at 5 8 of an inch all the way down on both of my sleeves. Alrighty, so I've got them sewed on. So at this point, I have a band that looks like this, okay? And um, I am going to be sewing my side seam now, but actually before I do that, because this is going to be a fairly narrow hem, and I have a lot of bulk out here in this whole seam allowance with all of those gathers, I'm gonna come back in here with my pinking shears and take out about half the width of that seam allowance, okay? So that what gets encased in the band is much, much smaller. So let me go ahead and do that to both of my sleeves. All right, so after I trimmed my seam allowance, I went ahead and just pressed it down towards the band, okay? So it looks like this on the wrong side, looks like this on the right side. Now, I just decided that I'm going to do one more detour before I sew this seam. I'm going to go ahead and put the yoke on because I think it might just be easier to do it while this is flat. So I need to get my yoke piece here. Now there is a definite back part that has two notches and front part that has one notch. So I really want to make sure I keep those straight. So let me open this up just a little bit and on the wrong side, on the back, I'm putting a big blue chalk mark X. Okay, this is the wrong side of my fabric and that's the right side, okay? So the side that has the blue X is the back. But before I can do anything else, I'm gonna take a look at this and what I can see right off is that this is the side that is going to get sewn to the top of my sleeve. My sleeve is going to be gathered onto here. And I can see that there is a notch here, but that notch is dead center, okay? So if I'm matching a center notch to a center notch, that's pretty easy. And with my double notches here, I know that after I get everything done that I can transfer those over if I need to because those are on the back. So what I'm going to do is take both of these pieces over to my serger, serge around them, and then up at the very top here, there's going to be gathering threads put in, okay, because there's going to be another band that goes around the very top. So I can't remember if I've put those gathering threads into my other yoke pieces. It's been so long. And it doesn't look like I have, so I am going to hold off putting the gathering stitches in up here until I can go all the way around my entire neckline. All right, so let me go serge around these pieces and I'll be right back. Okay, so I am ready to put my yoke onto my sleeve here. Now remember, I have my letter B back here, so I know this is the back side of this sleeve my blue X so I know this is the back side of this yoke piece. I've got my right sides together and I'm going to go ahead and match it up here. I've got the gathering threads already put into the top of my big sleeve piece. Um, and remember the notch is at the very center of this and of the sleeve. Well let me just grab the big sleeve piece because with this busy print it's actually easier to look on here. And yes, the notch is at the very center of the sleeve too. So we're basically just matching centers here. So I'm going to go ahead and just like I just did down here, pin the outside edges, pin the centers, split the difference, pin those together, and then pull my gathering threads. So let me go ahead and do that for both of my sleeves here. 
I've got my yoke sewn on, you know, the standard 5 8 7 inch way. Once I had it sewed, I pressed the seam allowances up towards the yoke up here. I am not trimming these seam allowances. These I'm leaving whole. So the outside of my sleeve looks like this at the top and this at the bottom. So now um, with the band at the bottom is still open and look at that. Have you ever done that where you click, cut, you're cutting something out and I didn't even notice, I got a notch there. I'll figure that out, that's not a real big deal. It's just kind of annoying, but anyway. I wanna make sure I match this seam very carefully here. That is the seam where I sewed the band onto the mid sleeve portion. Okay, and then up here I'm matching it and I'm going to sew a seam at 5 8 7 inch from up here all the way down to the bottom of both of my sleeves. And once that's done, go ahead and press that seam allowance open. Okay, so I've got it sewn up and over here at my ironing board, I'm just going to press it open. I got my sleeve roll stuck in there, as you can see. Very handy, highly recommend that you make or get a sleeve roll of some kind. Okay, so now that I have it like so, I'm gonna pull this out for a minute. I need to go ahead and roll up my bottom of my cuff to make my little band. So I'm just gonna fold it up and over, you know, about five, eight, seven inch, and then fold it up again so it is just past where that stitching line is. Get those threads out of my way here. Grabbing my pins. Okay. You can see that it wants to fray. That's why I was making sure that I surged everything as I went along. All right, so that's where it is here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Fold it under about five eighths of an inch or so. Put it up just pass to that stitching line and pin it on and do that to the other sleeve also. I have decided that I'm actually going to stitch this on my machine from the right side to close it up. But in order to do that, I have to make 100% sure that this edge is gonna stay where I want it to. So that means I'm getting out my friend Stitch Witchery and um, I get, you know, this little half inch wide stuff and I'm just gonna stick it. I did press my little turned under edge just a moment ago, okay? So I'm just sticking a little bit of this underneath the edge, okay? And I'm gonna press that on. And that way I can remove my pins, okay? and I can make sure that this is gonna stay where it needs to. But you can see that it is pressed and glued beyond where that stitching line is. So on this side, when I come back and machine stitch it, I can do an edge stitch, you know, just barely on the band side here, all the way across, and I can know for sure that I'm gonna catch this back area here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish, you know, I've already pressed it. I'm gonna go ahead and slip my little stitch witchery in, press it with the stitch witchery, and then go back to my machine and do that edge stitch looking at it from the right side. Okay, so I'm over here at my machine and, and I need to tell you, exciting news, I ordered a new sewing table. I did no special promos or anything like that. I went to sewing parts online and ordered it just the same as everybody else has to. So when it comes, um, I'm gonna be really excited. I'll show you all about it. Um, I was just getting frustrated with this this table. I love the idea that I can interchange my machines and my, my new one I'll be able to also. But in order to get to all of my stuff, like over here, I have to clear everything off to open this up. And the same thing over, well you can't see it, there's another side over here. If I wanna to get to the stuff that's in there, I have to clear everything off to open it. That's a pain, that is such a pain. So I won't have to do that, plus I'll have room over here for my serger. So excited about that. All right, I wanted to show you, because I do use, you know, old school flatbed machines, um, if you have a free arm, you know, you can just slide something onto a free arm. 
in order for me to to use this the way that it's comfortable for me um, I need to find where my center seam is and that's right here I sew with my sleeve inside out okay so I can just get it started down here and that way I can look at the right side through this little hole and just kind of rotate around okay and it's really really easy oh and see that bumping that I get here I won't have that with my new table too so just saying new table is going to be exciting maybe the next video we'll see depends on how fast they ship but yeah that's the best way so if you don't have a free arm machine don't worry you can still do sleeves very easily and doing it this way I can see exactly where I'm stitching so um, when I pull this off I'll show you but I can get my stitch line right next to the edge where I want it okay so this is my stitching extra thread here my stitching from the outside it's just a whole lot easier for me to do it that way you know um, now I need to go ahead and go get my main front and back pieces because it's time to go ahead and sew the sleeves onto the dress all right so here's my dress I just have my single layer here this is my back this is my front you know, my little opening and all of all of that so I need to find a sleeve that is the appropriate direction if I'm putting right sides together which I need to here will this be the back side yes it will I see my red B there and my blue X there so yay that's good I need to go ahead and match these up grab my pins back someday I'm going to get a prettier pen holder that works I just love mine because it has this massive magnet in there and it just works well anyhow I am looking to make sure that I have this seam at the 5 8 inch point matched up okay so up here ooh, there's a little bit of gapping there but you know what we're just going to ease that in um, hang on let me get the rest of this matched up and then we'll see how it goes so I'm going to match up my center bottom seam here making sure my seam allowances are open on both the sleeve and the dress so I'm going to pin those open like that come over onto this side make sure this seam matches up with oops, this seam and my little microphone fuzzball just fell off sorry about that okay so get that pinned back together and it looks like this is lining up perfectly here and midpoint here is lining up so the curved part at the bottom of the sleeve is lining up very well so that's good all right and then the final up here at the top matching up the top edges let's see how that works well that works pretty good okay so there's only one little segment where I'm going to need to do some easing and if you haven't been with me for a while let me tell you I like to ease things together so the first thing I'm going to do is pin the midpoint okay so the shorter side I'm going to fold it where the shorter side is on the inside okay and match up get these edges matched up together here okay so I'm going to pin it right here okay in the midpoint now I have two smaller segments and if you can see the smaller segments you can kind of smoosh them down and it's going to lay flat at that 5 8 inch point so that's not really a big deal <clears throat> at least on this bottom part let's try the top if I just take my time and smoosh it in will it work yes if it didn't if it was still a little bit too long to just kind of massage it into into submission you know what I do is the longer the side that has more gaping I put on the machine on the bottom so that then as I'm sewing the feed dogs can work in any extra ease easy peasy don't have to worry about it so I'm going to go over to my machine and basically sew this whole seam at 5 8 7 inch then after that 
come back and sew the bottom part just between you know this not including the yoke but from this seam over to this seam about an eighth of an inch in so I'll have a seam at five eighths of an inch and then one probably around a half inch from here to here okay okay so now what the instructions want you to do is come back you know I've got my two rows of stitching right here okay it wants me to come back between the notches which is right about here and right here I know you can't see trust me I can it wants me to trim out everything between those notches but not going up to my my inner row of stitching so I'm just going to use some pinking shears and clip it out this is just to reduce bulk and make it a little more comfortable to wear you know it'll flex a little bit better and everything down there and you won't have anything you know hopefully hopefully being uncomfortable up under your armpit so I'm going to do that to both the other sleeve also Okay, so now what I need to do is go back to my ironing board and the seam allowances here, I need to press them towards the sleeve. Okay, so they're both going to be going like this towards the sleeve on both sides. So just to get a look at what it looks like before I press it, let me get this situated here. Okay. So this is what it looks like right now, kind of a flat top there. There is going to be gathering and a band put at the top there. Um, looks like it could be some sexy off the shoulder looking thing if you wanted to finish it with just a big elastic up there right now, you know. But we're not going to do that. Um, but I think it's looking pretty interesting. Now down here, there is no shaping down here. The belt is what's going to be shaping it, you know. So it does look kind of moo moo ish, but you know, that's a comfy option also if that's what's making you happy. So let me go ahead and get my seam allowances pressed towards the sleeve. And then I'm going to need to come back and run my gathering stitches around the top. I kind of waited till this point because I wanted everything sewed together so I can make one big loop of it all. Yeah, I do need to run two rows of gathering stitches. So what I'm going to do is start at this opening here, okay, and just run like normally a row at about a quarter inch, another row at about half of an inch, long gathering stitches all the way around and ending right here. I wanted to mention that while I'm pressing my seam allowances towards the sleeve, and it's mostly up in this yoke area where I'm pressing that, I am also coming over and pinning that seam allowance the direction I want it to go so that when I run my gathering stitches, um, they're going to stay going the right direction because that's important. Okay, so we are just cooking right along on this thing. The last piece I need to add is this um, binding that's going to go around the neck. And it's a lot longer than what you think you're going to need because there's a tie in the front, okay? So on this big long band, there is only one notch, but there is a lot of dots. And the dots are going to be matching up where the different parts are joined together. So um, there are two of these. What I'm going to do is go ahead and sew them together first. Um, and what they also want you to do is after you sew them together to fold one of the sides in half an inch on the long unnotched side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're going to humor them, okay? After I get it sewed and pressed, then I'm going to come back and mark where all my notches are. All right, so one part of my big long strip, and it's just a rectangle, honestly, pick a side, but this one says center back. And I wanna make sure my right sides are together, and they are. I'm gonna go ahead and at my sewing machine, sew this straight across here at 5 eighths of an inch, and press this seam allowance open, and then along one of the sides, again, it's a rectangle, you pick, um, I'm gonna fold up and press the edge at about a half an inch. Okay, so it has been sewed together right here, pressed open this edge, pressed up at about half an inch, maybe a little off in some points, but I don't think it's going to 
destroy anything if I'm a little big or a little small. So what I'm going to do is just with a chalk, because to me on this fabric, blue seems to stick out the most. I am just going to come up here wherever there is either a dot or a notch for my size and put a, a little hash mark, okay? So I'm going to do it all the way down this way and then on the opposite side. So this whole long part here, there's nothing that's probably where the bow is going to be. So then I can just flip it over here, line up the cut edge of my pattern to this edge of the seam allowance there and just lay it back down and start making my little blue hash marks. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is find my center back right here and I need to mark it so I can see it from the inside. So I just made that little crease, put my little blue mark. Okay, so looking at the inside, the wrong side of my fabric, I'm going to put the right side of my band against the wrong side of my center back here. Okay, and line those two up. And um, I am just going to go ahead and pin down both sides of this seam allowance just so it'll stay nice. Okay, now moving along, I have my first little dot mark is going to line up to this point where my seam is, where my back is joining up with my sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that here. And then my next little circle mark on my band is going to match up where the front of the dress is sewn together with the sleeve. Get that sewn on, or sorry, pinned on. Okay, then it comes a notch. And so this little mark here is actually indicating my notch. So I'm gonna get those lined up. Oops, nope, that was a circle. Okay, so getting my notch lined up here. And the final circle should line up to the very edge of this center front opening, okay? So I'm just going to pull it out and line up. This line here is where that circle is with the edge of the fabric right there, okay? I'm gonna match up the opposite side of my band the exact same way with those same anchor points, all right? So at this point, it looks kind of like this, kind of sloppy. I'm gonna need to pull these gathering threads in so that this is nice and smooth. So let me get this side pinned on, my gathering threads pulled, and I will be right back. All right, so I've got it all pulled in and gathered in all the way around my neck band here. So remember, I am sewing it the right side of my band to the right side, to the, sorry, to the wrong side of my dress. So when I go to sew it, I'm gonna put it this way on my machine. You know, put this extra little strap holding out there. And I'm gonna be looking at it this way. This is the right side of my dress here so that I can get my gathers, you know, situated and organized as I sew it. I'm gonna sew this at five eighths of an inch all the way across. Okay, so I've got it sewed on, all right? Now I'm gonna to need to be able to wrap my band around so I can sew it down from the front. But again, this seam allowance is quite full and bulky. So in this area, I'm not gonna deal with trimming way out here in the straps, but up here at the neckline, just like I did at the lower sleeve, I'm gonna come back in here and trim about half of the bulk out of this gathered seam allowance and that should make it a lot easier to go ahead and turn that band over. So just this little part that I just did here. Now you can see that I can go ahead and fold it over and it's gonna fit really well like that. So now that that seam allowance is trimmed down to a much more reasonable size, I am gonna be folding this edge over so that my folded edge is just past the stitching line, okay? 
And I'm just gonna pin it down on all the way around the whole neckline over here. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of my neckline here and I'm just gonna need to make a little band. So one side of this has not been folded up. What I'm gonna do is just fold that raw edge on my band up to meet the other one, fold it in half, and pin that closed. Trying to catch my little threads because again, this wants to fray, you know? So I'm just gonna pin it together like that the rest of the way down. Get it all tucked in nicely so that when I come to stitch this, I'm gonna be like edge stitching it. I can edge stitch this entire length closed. Now I need to point out, this is not the way that they say to in the instructions. In the instructions, what they're gonna want you to do is basically fold this strap in half, right sides together, and sew it from the very end over, down, so you have a really long, narrow strap, and then pull that right side out. I just don't feel like turning a, a long, skinny strap, so to me, um, this is a lot less headache, and I think it'll end up looking the same, have the same effect. And just quickly, I want to show you the way I'm doing the ends of my straps. I am just you know, opening up that one fold that's pressed, folding in the very edge about half an inch, and then letting this folded edge come back down, folding up. It would be easier, honestly, if I pressed this right now, but then I'm folding up the bottom edge and then folding those together like a taco. Okay? And sticking a pin there. So that is how I'm closing up my bottom edge. And when I do edge stitch this, I am going to be coming, you know, up this way and then down this way. Okay, so at this point I have my band on and it's a whole lot easier stitching this from the outside where you can see it, you know. I'm going to go ahead and pop this onto my dress form. I have not hemmed up the bottom yet, but I want to see what it looks like. Okay, so here she is. You know, I just grabbed a belt, a random belt to put on her just because that's what the waist shaping is going to be is the belt. And so I think it's going to be actually kind of cute. The fabric itself is pretty lightweight as far as, you know, the weight of it, but it's opaque enough that you're not going to see through it. So that's kind of nice. Um, I am enjoying, I'm enjoying working on it. I, I think that, um, you know, if you're someone who did not want the belt, wear it without it. It's just going to be a very loose fitting dress, but doing it out of the lighter weight fabric, it's not feeling super bulky. And I was kind of concerned with all of the gathers going on that if I used a thicker fabric, like one of my thicker cottons and things like that, that I like to use sometimes that that might be a little bit much. So I am pleased with her. The pockets, the side pockets look like they are positioned well and the little pocket opening is hidden you know, because of the way that it's sewn in. So that's good. From just eyeballing this, I just want to put a small hem into it, maybe an inch or so, probably a narrow hem. I don't even know what the pattern says, but I will take a peek at that. But yeah, I think it's going to be really cute. So back here at my table, very simple hem coming. I am just going to fold it so that this selvage edge is hidden like that, which is about five eighths of an inch, and then fold it up again, which is about three quarters of an inch. Right there about, stick a pin there and do that the rest of the way around. I'll press it and then just machine stitch it along the edge. This fabric is busy enough. I think that that's gonna be just fine because it is a, a flat edge down here. It's not a curved edge, so that's gonna work out really easy. Okay, we'll take those off. 
So here it is, you know, cute little dress. Sorry, I'm jerking my little microphone around. It is windy out there, and I just did not want to stand in the wind to record this. So here we are on my porch, you know, till middle of fall. I'm gonna call it middle of fall. Very comfortable dress. Um, you know, if you don't feel like you want to accentuate your waist and you want to just go without it, I guess that is possible. It's not overly flared. It's flared enough that there's enough room to move around, but there's not a huge amount of fabric. So again, I made it out of a fairly lightweight but opaque kind of fabric and it seemed to work really well. So I think that I like it. Hope you did too. Hope you got something out of it and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Bucolic life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful white houses. The view I see each day when I arrive. This life pleases me, as it is plain to see, I'm living my bucolic life.